in yeah. the world. But she says she understood that the restrictions allowed a one-on-one -on -one appointment in salons. What do you make of that? I heard that, and I thought to myself, well, as a hairstylist, I see clients one-on-one, -on -one, so that would mean I would be open. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, yes. Pardon, start trying to laugh. Yes, that it would mean Sorry, that. Are yes. you are you open? No. Good afternoon, everyone. Two briefings ago, I asked, where is Nancy Pelosi? Today, I can announce we have found Nancy Pelosi. Um, as you can see, we found Nancy Pelosi going into her hair salon. We will be playing the video on loop for all of you to see during the duration of this introduction. Nancy Pelosi was not in the halls of Congress when I asked where she was. She was not working in good faith to make a deal for the American people. Nope, Nancy Pelosi was found in San Francisco at a hair salon where she was indoors, even though salons in California are not only open for outdoor service. Apparently, the rules do not apply to Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She wants small businesses to stay shut down but only reopen for her convenience. Do as I say, not as I do, says Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is holding up $1.3 trillion in relief for the American people while getting special access to the very kind of small businesses that this money would support, businesses like this hair salon. Before she skipped town to violate her state's health guidelines, Pelosi proposed a bill. It was called the HEROES Act, which contained no additional paycheck protection funding. This is funding that would help the very small business she has bizarrely accused of plotting against her. The president sees through Democrats' disregard for Americans in need, and he took action unilaterally in his own accord. Uh, he provided relief from evictions, he provided unemployment insurance, he paused student loan payments, and he cut the payroll tax, putting money in the American people's pockets. Congress also failed to authorize funding to provide children with free lunches for the 2020-2021 school year. And again, President Trump with senior advisor Ivanka Trump took action. And now USDA has extended a summer program which will ensure children continue to have access to free meals through the end of the year. Nancy Pelosi is demanding an apology from a single mother and small business owner who has received threats since Nancy Pelosi's comments against her salon. Salon owner Erica Kaya said this, since this happened, I've received nothing but hate text messages, death threats, saying they're going to burn down my hair salon. It's just sad that my community is pulling this, saying that I threw her under the bus when I did not. So that's hurtful. Uh, but yes, I think I'm pretty much done now. Nancy Pelosi, you ought to apologize to the American people. Or better yet, come back to Washington and get to work for hardworking Americans like this salon owner that you maligned and demanded an apology from. And with that, I'll take questions. Yes. No, I've been there many over the years. I've been there many times. I appreciate, I appreciate the question. And let me just say this. I take responsibility for trusting uh, the word of a neighborhood salon that I've been to over the years many times. And that um, when they said, well, we're able to accommodate people one person at a time and that we can set up that time i trusted that as it turns out it was a setup so i take responsibility for falling for a setup and that's all i'm going to say on that anything else well, you on the excuse me well i don't i think that they owe, uh, that this salon owes me an apology for setting up, but I will say this in fairness to him and in sympathetic to him, we have to get our country moving again. And I will not let this subject take away from the fact that we have 180,000 plus people who have died from this virus. Uh, since we passed the bill, more than half of those people have died since we passed uh, the legislation. 4.6 million, I know. 4.6 million have become infected since we passed the legislation. And in, in, uh, there are answers. There are scientific answers for this. 96 million, excuse me, 96,000 people have died since we passed the HEROES Act. So they want to jump on this. 
I think it's really important for us to pass the bill so in a scientific way we can address the virus and we can bring people back to work. I have been inundated by people who are in the hair service industry saying, thank you for calling attention to this. We need to get back to work. We need to get back to work. And many of them annoyed at the uh, uh, setup that was there for a purpose that has nothing to do with uh, uh, ending the crisis. Any other questions? I said that's an answer I'm going to answer. I'm all, that's all I'm going to do. I, that's all I'm going to do. I'm, that's all I'm going to answer. Do you have any questions about the fact that people are dying, that schools need to open, and the rest? I feel that this, I feel your question and your question are an opportunity, and I thank you for them. An opportunity to say they should, it, there's more to this that I'm not going into as to the motivation of a salon to say to me, yes, come in, and then they go from there. It was clearly a setup. I take responsibility for falling for a setup by a neighborhood salon that I've gone to for years. And that's, that's really what it is. So again, I, I, uh, I, I think we should use it as an opportunity to say there's so many people. I don't know where you all get your hair cut or whatever it is, but we have a wealth of people who are engaged in these services. And again, the state and the city, depending on the incidence of infection in those areas, decide how they will function. If the salon is saying that we're able to do this but, and they're not, then they should not have said that and they should not have been open for me to go there. But we trusted a neighborhood salon that I've been to for years. Any other questions? Guys, we literally may have the most hypocritical person in the history of this world, all right? So Nancy Pelosi is bashing Trump. She's all over Trump. No one's wearing masks at the RNC. Nobody's social distancing. No one's doing any of this. And she's all about, oh, we can't have businesses open. Everyone needs to go through economic depression. She's all about that, all right? But then she goes to a hair salon where she claims it was a setup for the hair salon owner to get back at her for no apparent reason, when he chose not to wear a mask, and when she chose to go into the hair salon, and she just uses her power to get in places. No one else can. Everyone else has to go outside. Everybody else has to wear a mask when they're doing it, but not her. She thinks she has the right to go into a hair salon and get her hair done when everybody else can. And she's like, oh, well, I thought one person can be at a time. Then yes, that lady was right. Couldn't her business be open? She is a hairstylist. She's only one person. So, you know, Nancy Pelosi is demanding for an apology from them when she needs to be giving everyone else an apology. Like, she literally wants an apology, yes, from the hair salon owner. It's just ridiculous. I cannot stand it, all right? Because Nancy Pelosi, she doesn't want us to do as she does. She wants us to just do as she says. So, and then, but luckily we have Kaylee McEnany and Donald Trump to be in there and save the day. But it just makes me mad because they don't, they know that our economy is so, and they know that's what we need to do. But they can't have that happen until Biden's president because they need to make Trump look bad. The, Today, if Biden gets president, oh, they're going to reopen the economy. They're going to make sure that all the jobs get back together unless we win the Congress, Senate, and presidency, which we need to do. So please vote Republican. Please vote Trump on November 3rd so we could get Joe Biden out of the House. And until next time.